Husky Game Prep is brought to you by Gate City Bank, proud supporter of your Huskies. Stop by and ask us about our low interest rates to finally buy that new snowmobile or ice house you've been waiting for. Contact any of our 43 locations across North Dakota and Central Minnesota and of course around the St. Cloud area. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hey Huskies fans, happy holidays and welcome into another episode of Huskies Game Prep brought to you by Gate City Bank. Sam I'm Getzinger here with you back after a little time off enjoying this Christmas break and I'm joined alongside Mick Hatton from the rinklive.com. Mick I imagine you're doing pretty well back home from the pod in Nebraska Omaha how's the first half of your holiday season going? Uh, it's gone pretty well I mean it's a little bit more low-key than uh, normally uh, we would be kind of back and forth with uh, a little bit more family than we were but uh, we got some uh, zoom meetings in with some family and uh and FaceTime calls, so uh, we, you know we we made it work. I did as well, and luckily, uh, luckily we have Zoom and FaceTime and Skype around. We're able to keep up with our family during these very strange and unusual holidays. But I'm glad to hear it went well. I'm glad to, to see that you got back safely from Nebraska mm-hmm. Omaha. Now, uh, you recently did a, a pod recap with our very own Rachel Herzog last week. That's up on our social media pages, our website. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, feel free to do so. It's a very cool. It, inside look at what the experience was like in the pod Nebraska Omaha so I won't ask you too many questions about your time in in the pod but I do want to get uh, some of your thoughts on on the play in the pod and we'll start with uh, your thoughts on uh, some winners and losers uh, from pod play I want to want to hear some teams and maybe some individuals uh, that stuck out to you that exceeded expectations uh, after this pod play is done and maybe some teams that have to do uh, a little bit more work in this second half of the season to climb back and uh, uh, really salvage themselves. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, you look at the top four teams uh, in the conference standings right now, and you'd have to mark all of them as, as, as winners uh, coming out of that whole thing. Uh, North Dakota in particular, they, they had uh, two defensemen, uh, you know, take off for the World Junior Championships, and then they had some injury issues, and yet, uh, you know, here they sit, uh, you know, atop the the NCHC standings here is, is uh, we get ready to start January. So uh, they were able to muscle their way through and, and, and fight their way to the, to the top. And uh, so I, I would have to say that they're, that's a big win for them because uh, they weren't close to 100%. They were actually undermanned uh, on the ice for several of those games. Uh, Nebraska Omaha is uh, another team that it would have to you know, automatically, you know, you, you have to put them up as a, as a big winner. I, I think a lot of people had tagged them for, you know, maybe the, the middle to the bottom of the pack, uh, you know, going into the season. Uh, they proved uh, during their, with their play in the pod that uh, they're going to be a team that's going to be tough to handle every night. Uh, you know, St. Cloud State saw that, uh, you know, they, they played two different games against St. Cloud State. Uh, one game, they, they kind of got a lead and, and ended up playing more of a defensive game uh, and pulled out a, a two to nothing win. Uh, you know, the other game, they, they tried to play a little bit more up and down with St. Cloud State and ended up being a five to three uh, win for St. Cloud State. But, uh, you know, they're a team that can score a lot of goals uh, and, and they have depth in their scoring. Uh, they're, this is probably one of the deeper uh, UNO teams I've seen, and, and their defense is a lot better. I think that's a big thing uh, when, when you look at them overall. Th- their defensive play uh, and their defensemen are, are much better than they have been in recent seasons. And then you look at, you know, St. Cloud State, uh, you know, and UMD. Uh, now, UMD was, got off to that, you know, great start uh, down there in the pod. Uh, now they're St. Cloud State and, and uh, UMD both played one fewer game than, than North Dakota and, and Nebraska Omaha, uh, but but they they are only sitting I think it's two points behind North Dakota as, as we get uh, started here in the second half. Uh, UMD had had a lot of question marks coming in. Uh, you know who was going to play goal for them? Uh, who was uh, who's going to replace a lot of minutes on, on defense for them. And, uh, you know, their, their goaltending has, has been, I think, better than most people expected. Uh, Wyatt Kaiser has kind of stepped in, and, and some of the veterans have stepped in and played bigger roles uh, 
you know, defensively and played well uh, for UMD. So, I mean, they're, they're off to a good start. You know, in, in St. Cloud State, uh, you know, I, I, I spoke with uh, Brett Larson at the end of last week. And, you know, if, if he said that when, when they set out their goals for uh, th this pod and what they wanted to accomplish, you know, he, he thought that they, wa they wanted to win six games. And that was when they thought they were going to play 10. And so they come out of it six and three, including two wins over Denver, uh, which which is uh, was quite an accomplishment because I I think this is a you know this is a talented uh, Denver team, and so the, those six points that they picked up over Denver, I, I can't emphasize enough how how big those were for St. Cloud State, and they picked up a win over North Dakota. I mean they they, they showed signs that that they can play with you know the you know the big boys, I guess, in, in, in the conference in, in that, uh, in, in that pod. And, 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 and that was a, a thing that, yeah, we saw bet, that better in the second half of last season, but until you see it, you know, this season and, and what, with this group, uh, you, you didn't really know. So I think that's a big win. Denver's a team that, you know, I, I, I am absolutely shocked that they came. I think they're three, six, and one coming out of this. And if you had told me that they, Denver was going to come out of that three, six, and one, I, I would have called you crazy going into it. Uh, they have a ton of talent back. They've got some graduate transfers. Their goaltending is back. And this is a good hockey team. Um, you know, for whatever reason, they just had, they had a tough time, you know, finishing off wins and, and uh, putting – you know, finding ways to to get wins, and I, I'm, I now I think that's going to change in the second half. But then again, you look at the schedule. The the that's, uh, you know, it, it's not uh, an even schedule. It's an unbalanced schedule here in the second half. They've got to play, you know, North Dakota four more times. Uh, Colorado College. Uh, you know, I I thought Colorado College was. I know they're, you know sitting kind of farther back in the standings but uh you know they th that's a tough Colorado college team they're better than I thought that they were going to be I, I think you know the question is for them is going to be their goaltending uh can they get enough goaltending to uh to hang with people but when they play structured and they play simple uh they can be a tough team because they're they uh you know they, they kind of clog up the middle a little bit and then uh, that they're opportunistic with the, with their offense, uh, and Denver's going to have to play them, you know, s six times. So I mean, it, it'll be very interesting, I guess, to see how Denver kind of comes out uh, here in the second half. Uh, Miami is a t is a team that's uh, struggled with with their offense, uh, you know, in the in the first half of well at, at the pod, uh, but they at the same time their goaltending is really good. Um, Ludwig uh, Person and, and uh, Ben Cross both proved to be guys that they can rely on back there. Person had two and a half games where he didn't give up a goal. Um, so th they're a team that, uh, you know, they're going to have a chance just because their goaltending is so good. Um, but, you know, can they generate enough offense? I think that's the big question for them. And then uh, I'm trying to think, who am I missing? Am I missing anybody, Sam? I think Western Michigan was the only one we didn't get. Uh, okay, Western, on. yeah, Western Michigan, uh, you know, they had kind of an interesting uh, situation where, you know, Brandon Bussey, their starting goalie, got got hurt in the early going, uh, actually against St. Cloud State in the opener. Uh, and then they, and then Austin Kane kind of took over the, the number one goaltending uh role for them and it sounds like Bussy is going to be out for the season so I believe so yeah but at the same time uh, they had a couple of really rough games right after they played St. Cloud State I think they lost 10 to 2 and 7 to 2 and then they rebounded to where they were you know they were battling people they looked more like you know the Western Michigan uh, that you're used to seeing where they're they're a really tough team to play uh, you know they they kind of moved some some things around with their lines and the uh, you know, their special teams play is something that needs to get uh, a little bit better and they need to, uh, you know, find ways to, you know, maybe generate some more offense, but, but they've got a young roster. I think they've got a, a 10, 11 freshmen on that, on that team. And so they're going to have to get, <laughs> they're going to have to get older in a hurry, but uh, they're, I thought they showed a lot of improvement as, as the pod went along. 
And if I counted correctly, I believe uh, the NCHC has five teams in the top 20 uh, polls right now, which is very impressive. The NCHC, no slouch like always, three of those teams uh, in the top 10. And we very well could see some more teams in the conference sneak into that top 20 as well with, uh, with Western Michigan, Colorado College, as you mentioned. Maybe if Miami, if they catch on a run, but they got uh, a tough schedule coming up. Let's talk about this second half uh, schedule for the NCHC. A uh, little different than uh, what we saw in the first half with the pod. Uh, as you mentioned, it is uh, kind of an unbalanced uh, schedule because you're only seeing a couple of teams uh, a, a good amount of times as opposed to seeing the whole conference. What are your thoughts on this, uh, this new schedule for this very interesting uh, season? Well, I think the thing that pops out at you right off the bat is that they have to play UMD six times and four times right after the break here. Uh, th th those are going to be very uh, telling games, I think, to me. I mean, uh, you know, UMD and, and St. Cloud State have played uh, very tight games. Uh, St. Cloud State's been very competitive with them. You know, obviously, if you go back two seasons, you know, St. Cloud State kind of owned the conference or whatever. But the games against UMD were, were just primetime events. And each one of them, I think, I think if I – and I haven't looked back at the schedule, but I think almost all those games that they played that season uh, were one goal games. And if you remember the NCHC uh, championship game that season went to double overtime. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in last season, I, I kind of throw out the, you know, the, the end of the uh, regular season series, you know, St. Cloud State didn't play well. UMD clearly was was revved up, and but the first two games that they played last season were along those same lines. And so, how is that going to shake down here? You know, for St. Cloud State, how are they going to play against uh, UMD? Are they going to be able to, you know, generate enough offense? Uh, UMD's I think strength uh, this season is actually their veterans up front. Uh, you know, can they? Uh, you know, and UMD showed signs that their power play can be extremely effective. So can St. Cloud State keep that penalty kill going? Or that tremendous start that they've had on the penalty kill. Can they keep that going against UMD? Uh, it's, a, it's a compelling matchup with them. Can they force the issue with, with Miami? I, you know, with Miami, if, if, they, if they play as aggressively as they typically do, uh, on offense and put a lot of pressure on their defensemen. Eventually those goalies, there's only so much that they can do. And, you know, they, they can't shut about every, every single game. So I, I, I think St. Cloud State has a chance to pick up some points there. Uh, and, you know, with Western Michigan, they've already played them twice. They're going to, I think they're playing them four more times uh, here in the second half. Uh, so that, you know, with Western Michigan, uh, you know, can they, you know, they had a win and a loss against uh, Western Michigan. And, you know, the, the loss was probably their, their worst game in the pod. Uh, you know, can St. Cloud State be, play that more up-tempo game? You know, if, 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 if Western Michigan's able to kind of slow the game down and, and kind of get them playing on the boards and uh, kind of mucking it up a little bit more, that's not where St. Cloud State wants to be. And that's where they get in a little bit of trouble. Um, so, uh that's the majority of the schedule anyway that that's coming up for St. Cloud State. They've got a they put themselves in a great position uh to try and get home ice with with the start, but uh it's not going to be an easy road. And with this uh, new change in the schedule for this second half of the 2020-21 uh, season, uh do you see it uh, potentially helping St. Cloud State, hurting St. Cloud State, that they're not seeing teams like North Dakota and Denver uh, as many times as you would in a normal season, but you're seeing teams uh, like a very hot UMD squad and also a team like uh, Western Michigan uh, that has uh, been a little streaky but seems like they're catching their stride. Does that help or hurt them as they go deeper into the season, get ready for the postseason? I th you know, I, I actually think it, I think it helps them that they, that they don't have to see North Dakota – this North Dakota team is really, really, really good. They're really deep and they're really talented. And so, yeah, I mean, avoiding them, you know, let's say that they had to play them four more times uh, that, you know, versus, you know, maybe playing Miami or something like that six times. Uh, we'd have a different outlook, I think, on the second half of the season. So, I mean, they, 
it, I think it's an advantageous schedule from that standpoint. Um, now, like I said, that that being said, I mean, one of the things that we we kind of learned in the pod, and and you hear, you know, coaches like to talk about that a lot, but we actually saw it happen a lot. Uh, you know, if you didn't bring your A game, and it didn't matter who you were playing against, um, you you get banged with a loss that uh, you you're not accounting for. Um, so you have to you have to kind of bring it. And can they have that consistency? Um, you know, for St. Cloud State, you know, I think you know you know goaltending needs to be a little bit better. Um, and and there, we need to see more consistency out of their power play. Those are two areas I think that if as you're looking ahead. Uh, for St. Cloud State, uh, can they do a better job of that? And I think, uh, you know, out of their six w uh, wins, uh, in five of them, they were trailing in those games, right? And don't want to be trailing teams. I, it, it's a wonderful thing to be able to come back, but you don't want to keep putting yourself in that spot where you have to come back. And so can St. Cloud State maybe get off to a little bit better starts and play ahead on teams? Uh, that's another thing in the second half. Well, Mick, it's always a pleasure to sit down and have a wonderful conversation with you. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Uh, the Huskies are back in action for the first time away from the pod this season. Uh, coming up this weekend, they're taking on uh, the University of Minnesota Duluth. It's a four versus six matchup in the national polls. It should be a lot of fun. A little bit of a schedule change. The first game is going to be on Saturday. That's a puck drop. Uh, should start around six o'clock. And then the second game of the series uh, will take place on Sunday over at the Herbert National Hockey Center. So, Mick, Appreciate you coming on and joining us here on Huskies Game Prep. Be sure to check out therinklive.com. You guys have been producing a lot of wonderful uh, college hockey uh, content at the early going to this season. So we appreciate that a lot, and you stay safe, my friend. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, we actually have an all-NCHC pod team, so we, people should check that out. Be sure to check that out. Uh, a couple of Huskies on there? Uh, there? There are a few Huskies mentioned in there, so take, get, get a look in there to see which guys we pick.